How long have you been here? Close to two years and some months. Are you a convict? No, nah, I'm still in Mandy. For two years and some months, you've been here in Mandy? Yes, boy. Hello and welcome to the podcast in which we're going to dive into the documentary, the film Remedy. It's a film that will uncover the everyday life of those behind the prison walls of a Samian prison. My name is Mathilde Utsan and I normally work for Dan Church Aid as an African correspondent living in Uganda. I have been doing this job for the last four years working regularly in Eastern and Southern Africa. And today I'm sitting down with two of the directors behind the Remedy, Alexander Lin and Jacob Jacobson. And Jacob is with me here in Copenhagen and Alexander is with us from Amsterdam. And can you please start introducing yourself, Jacob? It's, uh, I'm a social anthropologist and I have been living and working in Africa for 12 years. Uh, I've been uh, living in uh, Zambia and Tanzania and uh, Uganda. Uh, my interest in uh, film direction comes from when I was working and living in Tanzania. I tried to make a film uh, from a, a school in uh, in Tanzania, and that really uh, enlightened my interest in the, in the film media. So after trying to work on this film, I, I had this idea it could be interesting to make like a more real film, like a, in a more uh, professional setting. And then I remembered this prison from Zambia where I had lived. So I thought that prison there, would it be possible to make a film about that? And then I started pursuing that idea. Which we're going to hear much more about later. But before we get to that, I also would uh, like to invite Alexander to introduce himself. Yeah, I'm educated as a documentary director from the Danish Film School back in 2013. And that's actually when I got in contact with Jakob about a different uh, film It should be said that Jakob, he is uh, by nature a storyteller because he always has at least five stories that he he finds super, super interesting. And on this film, uh, Jakob contacted me because he, I guess, thought that it would be a great collaboration for the two of us. And um, for me, it was a very like quick process into uh, making the film uh, because uh, Jakob had already been working on funding and on several trips back to, to the prison. So... So as a documentary director, just to be invited in from the moment that you have access is such a luxury that I, I just couldn't say no to. You've been in contact with your family out there or how have you been managing? <clears throat> Only thing that I miss is uh, my woman and uh, my daughter. It has been uh, quite some time. Six months now, yeah, ever since they came. And uh, my daughter. What we would like to start mm -hmm. to discuss is what was the basic motivation behind creating this movie? I'm fascinated at, at, at these uh, places and situations where, where people are in some kind of extreme or extraordinary uh, pressure. In the most dire of circumstances lies also the uh, the biggest potential for learning something about uh, what it means to be a human being. We could, in this prison, I believed originally, find people that were under such pressure that it would again teach us something about that, that very question, which is a metaphor, of course, for when we are depressed. We are in, in our own pr mental prisons, uh, even as rich, privileged people. That is what I initially wanted to, to go to that prison to find. So, Alexander, it would be really interesting to hear what was the motivation for you when you started to embark on this project? I think there was a lot of uh, curiosity towards uh, with the whole prison system, being it in Denmark or being it in, in like in Europe or being it in, in Zambia. I think confinement and, and restraint, it, it, it's a fascinating topic and something that we can all relate to, like how would it be for me if I was uh, being taken out of my normal life and would I be able to adapt and so on. So I think what Jakob is pointing at, that the existential questions that arise are, are sort of like the same questions that arise in me. And then I think I'm just, uh, I love adventure and I love like, um, yeah, going on journeys that I, I don't necessarily know the outcome from, 
And I think it, when Jakob called me and asked me if I wanted to do this, it just sparked that exact feeling of, okay, this is an adventure that that I have no idea what what the outcome might be. And, and maybe it's a really, really bad idea. Uh, going to a Zambian prison, uh, Jakob, he, he's a guy who says yes, you know? He's a guy who's like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's go there. Let's examine that. It's it, There's never a door that Jakob doesn't want to try to open as a metaphor, but also in, in real life. I think like one of the hardest things in when we came to the prison was actually that there was a lot of doors that, that used to be open. And then when Jakob came back, the authority, the, the leadership of the prison had changed and the willingness to help us had changed. But actually, Jakob had still the really, really good connection with the chief uh, of, of all the prisons, uh, Chilom Dika, and, uh, at, and managed to diplomatically get the doors reopened. And for me, that was like really fascinating to see how he works. So why did you choose William as the main character for the story? One of the things I really, really immediately was interested in with William was that he really looked like a gangster with a lot of tattoos and, you know, his 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 language was very street and he really came from a background of like poverty and, and, and was brought up in the slums himself and, and didn't have a lot of like things going for him. But then at the same time, I think the contrast was just when we started filming with him and he was doing these little pearl uh, letters and like sitting with the like with kittens around him and i was just like what is this character like what is this guy i never saw anything like it such a sweet sweetness to him and he's such a humble and and a nice person when you get to know him so so that outer the contrast between the outer character and and my judgment on him and then who he really was i think that's what really sparked an interest from a very early stage with, with William. But I think when you're chasing some particular storyline, as we were with the with this story of, of uh, William and Mutinda and and so on, it actually becomes quite easy to, to be quite narrow on on trying to figure out, okay, what is this story? What is the importance of, of this story? And not the importance of the thousand other prisoners' stories. Yeah. I think... For him, he was just this character that you that you see in the film, uh, a, a person who adapts very quickly to his environment. He's very street smart. He he's a part of the group. He understands the dynamic that he's in, and he survives in that dynamic. And he thrives in in the prison in some extent. But then, of course, his biggest challenge is that he is missing his loved ones and that they have abandoned him. For me, it, it goes back to that whole uh, question about how two white guys can fly in, spending time in, in this place, but yet still being unable really to see the truth of this place. So how could we solve the challenge of telling a, a story here that was representing something, uh, not, not taking our truth down on their truth? The approach was to uh, writing a... Uh, from uh, somewhere, documenting something uh, that is uh, specific and particular. William was real. His challenges were real. And as my daughter way way back. Okay. Uh, she was two. Christine okay. and William, that's me. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The reason why she hasn't been showing up, she said she lost her NRC. But I mean, I just think it's, uh, it's just a story. Why is she expecting good or bad things? I don't know what she's thinking, what's on her mind, you know what I mean? What if she takes my daughter away with her? Uh, that's the thing, being bothering me right now. So now we're going to call any Elon and Jacob, can you please briefly describe who she is? And Elon is this uh, amazing individual who has uh, started a uh, an NGO called Ubumi Prisons Initiative, where she, working out of Denmark, is trying to uh, improve conditions for Zambian inmates. Good morning, Jacob. Good morning, Anna. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm good. 
So uh, I guess we would jump into one of the themes we are talking about here, and, and that relates to prison culture that we we have encountered here. They, they seem to be in a state of mind that doesn't reflect the realities of their surroundings. They are so uh, cramped in their cells and we know diseases flourish. And, and, and we have had this strange experience that we, we have just been able to walk around freely and film. That particular atmosphere, what words can we put on that? Yeah, it's, it is actually very particular and quite exceptional that you are able to, to, to film and to walk around as freely as you were. But I would also say that a lot of things happen when outsiders enter. Everyone's extremely aware that they have to come across in a certain way. So mm-hmm. underneath all of it, there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of suffering that will be hidden how much do you think that the fact that they they were in the prison with the video camera, how much did that contaminate their reality, so to speak? I know reality is a complex concept, but from what you have seen mm. as a researcher compared to when you've seen the movie, how is the relationship between those two representations of of that life? It contaminates it a lot, uh, I would say. It can be problematic in the sense that a, a picture of prison life the image of it becomes almost friendly, like it's almost a nice place to be. I also want to add that what you see is also there, and that's the duality of of prison life, because you also see kindness, you also see people uh, playing music, Uh, you you see people trying to get by somehow, and that's the awesomeness of humanity, isn't it? That we've managed somehow to create little little niches of, of, of something that you can bear or something that gets you through. So you also see that. You do see the massive overcrowding. You do see how dilapidated the buildings are. You do, you do get a sense. I think it's a, really, it's a really good story about humanity behind bars because it shows that people are human beings and it shows how difficult it is for a human being to be cut off by, from their loved ones. And it, it does get, that is also a part of, of prison life. So watching this movie, do you think it's going to have an impact on creating better conditions moving forward for prisoners in a country like Zambia? Um, I think it does, it does hold some potential. It can definitely be used as an advocacy tool um, because it humanizes inmates uh, and because it does show quite a lot about the conditions as well. Mm-hmm. It can, I mean, it can certainly spark conversations, important conversations. Thank you very much, Anne. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> bye bye, Anne. Thank you, Anne. What is your general impression of the prison system in Zambia? There is really, a, I guess, a broad list of, of issues that we encountered. And it was also, the, it, it, no, it was driven by William's story. It was at, at the core of his challenge as well, this of being kept for years. Uh, and I think that was kind of also relating into what we talked about along the way, this about what is the most terrible here? What is, what is it we want really should be different? And this is about seeing these guys coming out of their cells in the morning after, you know, on the 10th year of their life waiting, being kept in such a situation. But the pain of that and the injustice of that is, uh, goes through the roof, right? Uh, the conditions yeah. are horrible. We're hearing Anna describing the dangers and discomfort that people are living with every day. We have this scene where people are literally sleeping on top of each other. Can you talk about filming that scene? Yeah, that was a very claustrophobic experience for me to be locked in with the, the prisoners in the cell. And the guards were not very happy about us wanting to do this scene because, of course, this was also seen as a big critique of the imprisonment. So on a personal level, it was it was uncomfortable. So I really understood uh, at that point how uncomfortable it must have been to be confined for 12 hours a day or even more. And then again, I didn't understand. You know, you, you get the sense that, that you're never going to understand this before you do it yourself. 
before you you actually have to stay there and you have to stay and, and, and be a part of this system. But weren't you afraid to romanticize the prison system through this film? Yeah, I think I think we were, at least I was. But then at the same time, I also had a strong longing to actually go with something quite romantic. Because the, one of the first scenes we did with William was actually the mediation with uh, Mutinda, where she told him that she was uh, married to another man. And I think we were both just super blown away by having witnessed that and being like in awe of the complexity of being without your loved ones and what stories that were being unfolded in front of us. But yeah, it... it I think it was a concern, and both for me and Jakob, I, I think, and what we did, we actually had a lot of subjects that we were following in the process. So I think we were initially really trying to capture a lot of perspectives, and then we ended up narrowing it down to this perspective because we sort of understood in this process that you can't tell all the stories, you'll end up telling no story at all. The more we narrowed it down, the more important this singular story became. And the more I felt like I was immersed into a universe that I both was fascinated by, but I also identified with. On a political level, what is it that really strikes you as extremely problematic in this system? Here it's about getting a system to work together also, that the courts get uh, the sentence through in time. So otherwise they are stuck over there in the, in the correctional facility. So one person who has been very key to this project is Lloyd Tilundike, and we're going to call him now. But before we do that, Jacob, just help us understand why he's so key to this project. Lloyd Tilundike is key to this project because he is uh, a person who holds a lot of power inside the uh, Zambian prison system. He's the uh, second highest authority within the prison system as such. Mr. Chilundika, how are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. How is Zambia? Zambia is good. One of the things we've been yeah. talking about, uh, Chilundika, is this about the access into making this film in the first place. Yes. Why, why is it you develop the, the trust in, in this? Because I think it's very unusual for people to make films in, in the prison. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, uh, <clears throat> I think it was uh, because of obviously the the value that we we attached to to production of a, of a film as uh, as you were doing, and so we we were committed to supporting you throughout because also we do not have much records of of, of how we go about doing our work. An initiative like yours uh, was an opportunity for us to I think uh, view ourselves through the prism of, of an independent person like yourself. So this was very unusual because I, I don't think people have uh, ever filmed before in the, in the prison, isn't it? No, 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 no. Uh, authority is not granted every other day to, 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 to conduct uh, films or, or any other activities of that sort uh, in our facilities. Why did you then oh. see this opportunity and find this trust in Jacob and the team. What was different about them? Well, um, I, I think it was the uniqueness of the concept itself. It, it was uh, mapping uh, a process. And, and that mapping of the process was, 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 was going to be ultimately very beneficial to us because it was going to give us um, um, an opportunity to view ourselves through the eyes of a third person. Uh, the, document, the documentary itself provided some form of feedback on what we do, on the work that we do. So obviously it was unique, yeah. Wow, that's really wonderful. And from an outsider, Great. I have not been part of the process and I'm impressed about the access and the, the nuance and the love that is being shown to representing these, these persons and these characters. But we are also yeah, seeing yeah, we are, a prison system facing a lot of serious challenges. People are being prisoned. Certainly, yes. And what yes. do you think about that? Will that have any effect in, in Zambia in the future? It certainly will help. Inevitably, it is going to, it's, it's, it's going to raise, stimulate debate around issues of, 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 of what the conditions prevailing in our facilities, whether or not they, they, they conform, whether they are helpful to supporting a correctional system or not. It certainly will stimulate uh, a vigorous debate 
around broad range of issues. Yeah, broad range of issues. Do you, do you get, have you been able to see the movie yet? Yes, I have. What do you think about it? It, it captures anecdotally what goes on, the life of, of, of an inmate. Um, it pretty much cuts a slice of, uh, of, of prison life and, and presents it as it did. Yeah, yeah. And, and you feel like this is actually a very nuanced and accurate representation of the reality it is, that you... It is, it is an accurate uh, representation, it is. Thank you very much, Chilondike, for your time. But I'm humble, Jacob. I'm humble. So am I. Thank you very much, Chilondike. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. And all the best. Thank you so much. Some years ago, I was attacked in my own house. I almost died. I mean, I've got scars on my head. I fell into depression. I was cancelled and gradually I healed. I realized cancelling is a very powerful tool that can save somebody's life. I need to encourage somebody else the same way that they might have lost their family, they might have lost their wives, but they'll still, in one way or the other, have those things back. How did you come to get to know Hastings and why did he become such an important character in this story? Yeah, I think uh, both Hastings and, uh, and, and William were, were subjects that Jakob knew be beforehand. But when I first met Hastings, I think uh, it was really clear to me that, that he was uh, such an initiative taker in the, in the facility in a very different way than a lot of the other guards. Because I think he had a really strong will to to try and change and and better the situation for the prisoners, and it seemed very honest and very uh, very thoughtful. And I think what we portrayed in the documentary with him was was this link to a greater mission that that also was linked to his religious stance. But I also saw something very very human in his approach, uh, something that that I think both Jakob and I related to very deeply. He was both our key into access for the prisoners, but he was also sort of like a host in a way for the film and, and an ambassador for the film to exist. Without him, there would be, be no film for sure. And he was a little bit or even uh, much outstanding, I would say, in, in the sense that uh, what we don't see is that the system was not always very kind to him, right? He had so many struggles and he was representing a, a sort of otherness in the system. He was a little bit in his goodness. He somehow was even too too good in the eyes of, of the, the other staff, it seemed. And uh, and he was kind of our our counterpart inside. So he was our ally. He was, we, we, we were together with him. We, uh, he was the key to everything. So we, we see a scene where a, a man is released after being a remedy for five years, which, you know, is unbearable, honestly. And yeah. Hastings is the one talking to this man. What, what yeah. was it like to film this scene? And what are your thoughts about the situation for all these men sitting there not mm -hmm. knowing? That is something I'm still devastated about, really. Some of the fates we have uh, we have witnessed. Guys we have been working closely with, following our other storylines. Yeah. It's painful to, to witness because, yeah, imagine not lying down to sleep for five, six years. Some people had been in there for 10 years without receiving their, their judgment. And, th and that's how it is. You were surrounded by stories like that. So I'm really happy that it ended up in the film. I think it's an important thing that to understand the context of being uh, imprisoned and not knowing if you're going to wait for two years for your trial. Are you going to wait nine years? Are you going to wait like, and you just don't know. And the system is corrupt and it's such a long wait that the uncertainty and living with that uncertainty, that's, I think, what we really wanted to capture. And that's also why I think we, we named the film The Remedy. So you have been acquitted. I've been acquitted. And I know today you're going home? Today I'm going home. Uh, did you, you were still actually remanded? Just? I, I was just a remand. For how long? For five years. And finally you're going home. Finally. This is great. I think God has answered you. 
He has answered my yeah. prayer <laughs> and your prayers. Please. And now we are very excited because we are able now to get through to Hastings Siamongwa. But before we call him, just describe who he is and what he has meant to this project. Hastings Siamongwa is the guy who made this project uh, possible. He was the guy inside the uh, Lusaka Central Correctional Facility that we connected with in terms of he liked our project uh, on the ground. He was inviting us into his work. Uh, he was uh, a supporter throughout uh, the filmmaking. He is a uh, prison guard and a uh, prison counselor in Lusaka Central. Hello, Mr. Hassel. Hello, Mr. Hastings. How are you? Fine. How are you, Mr. Hassel? I'm good. It's very nice to uh, to finally okay. talk to you. We would like to just ask you some questions about your your work and about the the context that you're working in in the prison. Hastings, I think we would first like to just ask you if you can very tangibly sum up what is a remand A remand is a person who has committed an offence in either police custody or prison awaiting for trial. And what do you think you. about that the remedies you're working with are waiting so many years to actually get their trial? I think this greatly affects a lot of uh, those people who are uh, in a remand state because uh, some of them, as you may be aware, that someone is still awaiting trial, but. Uh, he or she is not guilty of uh, that particular offence. They have, uh, they have, they have been alleged to have committed. So, uh, and that does not give them uh, proper justice. Uh, as a result, they some of them end up become advanced criminals, and some, you know, it affects their families because they are the breadwinners for their families back home. Yeah, it has huge consequences, yeah. as we also see yeah. in the film. You know, you did uh, actually psychotherapy in another way, or, or counseling in another way during the uh, process. You were kind of uh, also the psychotherapist to the whole film crew, to me and uh, Alexander, when we were suffering many times throughout the project. One of the tools you used, I don't know if you would use it towards the inmates, but you had this wonderful song. We were walking up and down the streets and you kept on singing this song. I don't know, is it embarrassing to sing it now or how do you feel? <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Yakov. I mean, um, I can always sing it for you if you like. <laughs> yeah, whenever you were broken, I was broken and uh, could not see hope. I could just sing, do not be defeated. Do not be defeated, do not be defeated anymore, anymore. Do not be defeated, do not be defeated, do not be defeated anymore, anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hastings. You're very much welcome, Mr. Jacob. Do you like the movie? Very much I do. The world and Zambia especially also can get to, <laughs> to see this great movie. Huh? Thank you for now, Hastings. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. And what difference did it make that Hastings would then sing this song for you? Yeah, but that yeah. meant a lot, you know. It's uh, He had that kind of same style as William actually also has or displays that ability to think that there is a day tomorrow and you never really know and let's see what tomorrow brings. If scene in the movie that really st struck me and I, I think it must be the same for you is when Mutinta comes to the prison the first time and they actually have this very serious interaction and he gets the news. How did you get access to this scene? And was this just unfolding in front of your, the camera or did you know before? 
We knew that uh, Mutinda was coming for a mediation, but we had no idea that she was remarried or that she would tell William in front of the camera that she was remarried, which is, of course, the most dramatic part, I guess, of, of the scene. What we knew was that Hastings did these mediations with the prisoners. And, and because we were quite sure we wanted to follow William, we followed him on, on this uh, mediation. And, and I think what really struck me was that and what was uh, sort of scary because it was very much in the beginning of the whole process was that, that the Hastings decided to leave the room with me and Mutinda and William alone. And at that point, all I knew about William was that he was charged with murder and accurated robbery. So, so in the end, I was sitting alone with what I thought was maybe a really violent guy and his uh, ex-wife and thinking like, what, what is going to happen here? He's going to freak out on her? Is he going to get violent? But actually, what really came to life was that William is just such a nice and caring and uh, considerate and shameful guy. He had a lot of shame about his own role in, in their lives and how he put Matinda and their child into a very miserable life. So instead of doing all the things that I feared, he did the most amazing, loving thing, which was to embrace and accept and understand where she was coming from. And I think that's, that's when I knew that, okay, this guy, he's such a good person. He maybe have done something really, really bad in his previous life. And he, he's very remorseful about it. But being able to accept his faith in that way, it, it, that, that really touched me deeply. It's not that I, I was really into it, mm -hmm. but the situation that I was passing through. And I'm the cause of everything, yeah? I put the blame on myself, you know what I mean? Because I messed up big time. And on that one, I admit, it's like, mm, and I respect your decisions, I respect, mm, but you're happy now, yeah? Mm? You're happy with the same man you're with. <sighs> that same scene where Mutsinda is coming and uh... And I think he's shaking his head, like the shock really running through him. Uh, I think Alexander was about to drop the camera in the, <laughs> in the same moment <laughs> because uh, it, was, it was shocking to get such news from your, your wife, you, the, the person you think is your wife, and then now suddenly she has been married for a year. It also not only describes William, but also a lot of more inmates we have met in there. They might have some strategies, places where they want to go, things they want to achieve. But then if you're inside circumstances that are so unpredictable, it's like you can't just come out too direct on, on who you want to be. And I think also that's why I liked this love story. It was so specific. It was so uh, massive in William's world that he had to find an authenticity. He had to engage himself. He had to show who he was. He was a loving father. First and foremost, that, that scene really, as Alexander was mentioning, how he could receive such news from his wife like that. But why did you choose to tell a love story? Love is humanity, right? It's, it's like where you can tell a, a universally relatable story. It's love is the thing we, we all share. I'm talking about representation, really. This is about black Africa, you know, the, place of our dreams and nightmares and all that. We wanted to show real people uh, uh, love is just a great vehicle to use to bring back in the, the real person that an African inmate is. An African inmate is not a cliche, it's not one of overcrowding, all that it could be the backdrop and the things we ultimately want to change. But we wanted to do it by bringing in the individual again, bringing in the human being. That is, I think, where we had an idea that this is how we could uh, re-engage people. Instead of, because they have lived like this, uh, the prison population for, yeah, Lusaka Central now is, is, is nearly 100 years old, right? So how is it we make people invest themselves in this issue? Yeah, and see the people and not the, and not the crime, you know? Because I think that's exactly what's going on and, and why things haven't changed for such a long time that there is such a large judgment on the people that they have to suffer for the crimes that they did. 
and and this is why they're punishing them and why it's going so slowly with with like changing the conditions for the prisoners and i think that's what's really a shame if people just knew that these are, are people like you and me they wouldn't want them to suffer to that extent because it's so unreasonable what you are doing to these people and the rehabilitation is going to fail completely if you cut them from their loved ones and so on so that i think politically of course there is something behind our method of going to the subject to show that, that this is real people that 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 you're rooting for these people in our documentary you're rooting for the criminal you're rooting for the person accused of murder and and, and aggravated robbery because of course it's a real person and circumstances put him in this situation but this is just completely out of line what you're doing to these people mm. And I think when we keep ourselves stuck in abstractions and masses and numbers and things like that, it, it doesn't. It can do something, but it's it's not always effective in terms of generating real change. That the film media can do that of actually putting a face on a problem and make us connect with it in a in a different way. And I think it's worthwhile to put in that approach as well. So, what is really the main purpose of this movie? Well, ultimately, we want all the Williams to receive justice, in my opinion. Yeah, and debate what justice is, because I think right now there's a lot of people, especially in Zambia, who think that this suffering is the right amount of suffering for prisoners, that these conditions are the way that they should be right now, that they should be locked up in these conditions because they have to be punished for their crimes, even if they're not trialed, even if they haven't been convicted. And I think this is, uh, it's just out of line, basically. It's over the top. And you can really see like from a humanistic point of view, I guess, that's what we're trying to to sort of like break the barrier between the, the convict and the people on the outside who has no connection to them. And to sort of like reconnect people with who is really being imprisoned because it could be you and me, it could be anyone. Thank you so much, Jacob and Alexander, for taking the time to sit down with me and talk about this remarkable documentary and the making of it. I also want to send a huge thank you to an Elon Lloyd Tirondike and Hastings Siamongwa for taking the time to participate in this podcast. And thank you to Danita and the West Danish Film Fund, because without this funding, this film would not have been possible to make. To know more about this film, visit the website of the production company www.gotfat.dk or the Facebook page The Remedy.